<laughs> Don't do that again. <laughs> You're going like evil Popeye face. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Great. Anytime. <laughs> okay. That sounds like a plan. Okay. Welcome to Astroth Roundtable, episode 355. My name is Ben Bumhofer. You've reached the show that has absolutely nothing to do with news and information and everything like that. So if you're here for that, check out the starting zone. With me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Hi, Ben. What a fantastic intro where you chased people off. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> it's Friday night here in Azeroth, and you're maybe listening to this unless Ben scared you away. But those of you who remain, welcome to the show. We're here. It's me. It's John. I'm always here. It's Ben. He's here, too. Yes, I am. Uh, uh, well, you know, the reason for that intro is because a, a big thing has happened in WoW, and I just want to make sure that the people listening understand that uh, we are not a show that talks about concise lists of changes and things that happened and and uh, goes over them step by step to to, you know, talk about every single bit of content. Uh, we're a show where we just bullshit about whatever we want. Well, sure. And, and it just happens to sync up with some of the stuff that happened. Well, and here's the thing. So Ben, uh, Ben's kind of snarky way of saying this is this. Like, hey, a patch came out. And that means that mm -hmm. uh, there's new content, which means there are people who are going, mm, what's this World of Warcraft I keep hearing about on the tellies? And uh, so... On the talkies. <laughs> yeah, or wherever. I don't know where people <laughs> hear things. Uh, so people, uh, you know, come in, they search for World Warcraft podcasts, we're there, they they maybe try the show, this might be your first episode, if it is, welcome to the mm -hmm. show. Uh, hi, how you doing? Um, and 8.2, you know, was a while back, and when we, when 8.2 came out, Ben, uh, we didn't welcome new people, we just did what we always do, and maybe yes. there were some people that expected something different out of 8.2 coverage than what we gave. But, Ben, you and I have a history. We have a thing that we do, which is typically after a big patch comes out, we do a show where it's just you and me. Uh, typically, mm -hmm. we have guests on the show also to you new people who might be here. But we don't usually do that because there's a very good reason uh, yes. that we stumbled into. And that is this patch hasn't been out for very long, which means anything we have to say about this patch, we've had not even a full week with it. And it's been a work week for both of us, so we haven't even had just ample time to play it. Wait, John, you have a job? So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to give first impressions. And sometimes people hear first impressions and they take it as concrete evidence of this is your feeling on it, this is what you think of it, um, you know, whether we like it or don't like it or whatever that feeling may be. And they really hold us to it, and we don't want to do that to a guest. Uh, it's not no. necessarily a nice thing to do to a guest. We're kind of used to it for us, so we're going to do it. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today, Ben. We're going to talk about the patch with as yes. much experience as we have on it, which leads to the first question, Ben, how much experience do you have with the patch? Well, John, uh, based off of the just kind of get together and be online and hang out and do stuff Wednesday night, uh, you know, with my raid group and everything, I'm behind. <laughs> I'm very far behind in this patch, apparently. Uh, so, you know, I, I I did what every sane person would do is, uh, you know, Monday night, I logged out right in front of the embassy. So that as soon as I logged in, I could get into unlocking those Vulpira. And boy, oh boy, John, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Truth be told, Tuesday night, my entire night was go through Unlock the Vulpira, make a mage, boost it. Maybe, you know, race change another character, create another one to level from 20 up and, um, you know, work on transmogs. That is what I did Tuesday. <laughs> nice. What did you end up race changing? Um, I only did one so far. I just did my priest, uh, my goblin, and changed her into a Vulpira, okay. which is kind of dumb because if I had just leveled her 10 levels, then I could have gotten the goblin heritage armor. But oopsie, guess not. Considering I don't really like playing goblins, I'm kind of okay with that. 
Okay. All right. And hey, I don't look. think she was actually exalted with the goblins anyway, so probably doesn't matter. Yeah. We all got to make our decisions. We got to yeah. live with them. Exactly. Uh, but you got your Volpera. Mm -hmm. You know, you're happy about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and she's amazing. I I did some dailies or some world quests with her yesterday just so I can like get in there and have some fun. And I'm like, this is pretty amazing. And then I realized that, I mean, I, I didn't actually start it or anything, but this takes like the Volpira arrive. And like, if you do 120 boost and everything, you still need to start the whole Nagitar experience and all that stuff. So I'm really curious as to where it puts you into the war campaign so that, you know, you can like actually jump in and, you know, play the current content or not. Because if I was planning on like actually going in and raiding with this tune, it probably wouldn't be feasible at this moment unless I put in a lot of time. Right. Um, I also unlocked Volpera, so I guess right. we'll talk about that while we're while we're on this subject rather than just completely divide it up. And you know what I appreciate about unlocking them? Mm -hmm. It once again reiterated the importance of reading your quest and understanding what you're being asked to do. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about because, um, so, okay, I started up and I'm doing everything. And then I looked at, you know, say my quest text on, on the screen and saw a thing and I'm like, mouse over, read this. Oh, sweet. Okay. About after maybe one or two kills. So I got that pretty fast. Want to talk about your questing experience, John? Uh, I mean, it was fine. I figured it out quick enough, we'll say. But, you know, mm -hmm. I got the quest. It was like, yeah, give them to me. I don't really need to necessarily... I get where this is going. Like, you haven't created a narrative that's so confusing and impenetrable <laughs> that I haven't been able to figure out that the peons are rebelling and we need to go do things for them. I'm going to go do things for them and they're going to feel better about their lives. Great. Which was pretty cool. I got to admit, I actually really enjoyed that. So I went out there, you know, accept, accept the quest, da, 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 mm -hmm. give them to me. I need my Volpera. I've got other stuff to do. Uh, go out there and uh, take a look. And there sure enough is what I need to fight and I kill it and I get item one of 100. And I was like, okay, this is lower than I would have expected for a 100 quest, but uh, let's see how this goes. So killed another one, looted it, two of 100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I went, something's up. This seems like a questionable, uh, questionable amount of killing I'm going to have to do. And I looked, and <laughs> over by me was a warlock gathering up the largest collection of, and not large in scale, large in number, uh, of creatures, and, like, AoEing them all down. And I was like, that can't be what they want us to do right now. It's just mass yeah. pull tons the of stuff, animals. Considering the stuff is 120. Right. So I was like, killed another one three of a hundred i don't think i think something's up am i fighting the wrong things and then as i'm running around trying to figure this out which i would have figured out quicker if i didn't see a warlock also doing it um mm -hmm. but i was like something's up and then i noticed oh there's a button to click and i was like yep. mouse over what does it do oh it makes it big oh it's gonna drop more you know, killed <laughs> killed one big one. That's like here's fifty four meats or whatever it is. I was like, okay, there it is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we're good. So uh, yeah. yeah, it it's funny though because it just totally reiterates the point of like, hey, we write this quest text. Maybe read some of it. Or hey, we threw up an action button. Maybe look and see what it does. But it's so tiny and in the corner. I know. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I just, I didn't want to believe. But there it is. There's the importance of it. You should always mm -hmm. prepare before you head out adventuring. It will ultimately save you time in the long yes. run. And, and if you are uh, out there currently killing one wolf or panther at a time. Or chicken. Or chicken. Uh, hey, yeah. take a look at, uh, take a look at your quest bar this quest might go quicker than you think the other problem is 
And this is a real, like, John's a glass is half empty kind of fella. Look at him. Is <laughs> okay. honestly one of the thoughts that went through my head was, of course they'd make it some big grindy thing like this. Like, it just was the thought that popped into my head. Like, because heaven forbid you have something fun right away instead of, like, spending a week on it. Whatever. Fine, Blizzard. Like, it was a quiet thought. It got overridden pretty quick. But it was a thought that went through my head of just, like, of course they're making you grind for this. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, I I figured it out pretty fast. Like I said, I killed one or two things. And I'm like, this isn't right, and looked up because I was gonna click on the thing to read the quest text, and then I saw the button. I that that's when I moused over the totem, and I'm like, oh, cool, okay. And then you know, <laughs> called the first thing over, hit the totem, all of a sudden, shoom, I'm all yeah. Then like three other things came over, and shoom, I'm all yeah. I need to heal the crap out of myself <laughs> right now. I'm going to die. <laughs> yes i didn't die but i went through and did that but i i you know um of the different uh, allied race like intro quests and stuff that i've done they've all had such different themes based on the the actual race which is something that i really appreciate you know it's not just okay so they're all just go here and do this because that's what questing is but you know they have different themes and, and like urgencies about them like especially the magar versus like this like there's a huge urgency involved with the magar um but it's pretty cool and i've enjoyed all of them um and i've done every single one except for the mecha gnomes because john i found out i never finished the questing in mechagon i got exalted so i'm like halfway there <laughs> But boy, oh boy, do I not want to go back and do that for a race that I'm probably never going to play. Yeah. But I've got to unlock it, though. I actually, that was another thing I did on patch days. I got exalted with Mechagon. I was, oh, hey, I was a day away from getting it. And I was like, oh, I should probably get this seeing as I'm here. Why not? And so I went and I did some stuff on the island and noticed that nobody was there anymore. And then <laughs> uh, got my... Got my exalted status, so that was cool. That was fine. Um, so uh, what else did you do, Ben? What else was your experience? Unless you had more to talk about with the Volpira. I haven't played mine, so I don't know how I feel about my character. I made, oh a, my I made gosh, a monk dude. because there's something about a tiny, angry, frenzied, furry creature just <laughs> punching the hell out of you that I find I'm, incredibly I'll probably amusing. end up making a monk as well just because I like monks and I like Volpira. What can I say? Yeah. Um, well, I did a really quick, like, okay, create a character thing and then saw what they look like as death knights. And I'm just like, that's just no, just because they have the giant helmet on and stuff. What and I'm just like, just mm. coming out the side. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, I can't full pair are, are too pure to be death. Knights. No, they aren't. They're only pure in your mind. They're like, they're not no, they're even totally pure not. in the game. Like it's, it's not even a case of death knights. Like they're murderous <laughs> little creatures. Oh, I know. I, that's one of the reasons why I love them so much. Like, I love how the quest is all like, oh, um, so you don't want us with slight spoilers, whatever. You don't want us with the horde. Well, guess what? We're going to make sure you know why you need us. Yeah, I like that. That was pretty good. Pretty good. Um, oh, and also the, the third place where you go. I love that whole interaction and all that stuff. That was a lot of fun. Sure. Going back to. Uh, uh, Legion area involved a recipe. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good stuff. Um, yeah, our so favorite anyways. character wasn't there though. Yeah, he was. The grapes guy. Where was he? That's that's the dude that you turned the quest into. Oh, was he? I don't recognize him unless yeah. he's standing right next to a tub of grapes. <laughs> yeah, that's totally. Him. Was he creepy? No, not oh, really. Oh man, they should have. Well, maybe, maybe when he tried the wine. Maybe I don't know. Hmm. But uh, anyway, so so then Wednesday comes along, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna get my cloak. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna start this whole process because I've heard horror stories about, you know, failing the horrific vision. Like I know the first one you have to fail. But the second one and then, you know, totally missing out on a chance on an upgrade and like how you need to do this, like in order to stay, you know, with the curve and everything to, you know, be right on track for for your cloak. 
So I'm like, okay, here we go. We're going to start this quest line. We're going to do this. And then it takes forever. And I mean, I got to the point where like I'm doing stuff in Oldham and I have to, you know, do the, uh, the assault. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's just a whole ton of mobs and stuff to click on. And like, that's all it is. And it reminded me of warlords where I'm like, okay, you got to go and just do stuff for a while and fill up a bar. And I'm like, okay, like I didn't see anything that like fast tracked a lot of this stuff. In fact, the, uh, the daily quests that were available were like kill four rares or, um, I think there was like kill 10 elites or something like that. And I'm just like, it's, kind of tough to do this these things are actually hitting pretty hard and that's kind of where and not exactly a complaint but i'm trying to figure out what's the tuning on this stuff right now like did they tune it high enough so that you're gonna have a hard time unless you're doing it with groups are they doing it with the thought of once your cloak gets higher and higher it's going to be easier and easier to do you know like which way are we going with this because i went in there and like having two or three mobs on me, it, it was nearly deadly. And if I wasn't a healer, I'm like, I have no idea how I would have survived any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I have a theory on that. We'll talk a yeah. little bit more about that. I think later, okay. cause it, it kind of ties in to that, but I'll say to me, not to say that I, I've really struggled with it, but I've mm -hmm. noticed what you're talking about um which is just like man these things hit pretty hard like i definitely feel like i'm back in a higher level zone or something like that you know yeah these things aren't i'm not just wading through them and just going dead 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 um yeah. and so I, guess, I, I never expected to in the first place but i guess my default answer would be and this is a preview of what we might talk about in a little bit it feels like it's tuned for a patch that's not going to have any patches after it yeah yeah, I can see that. That we might be playing for <laughs> six months to a year. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, I I can definitely see that. And I guess that's why uh, if I were to try to run an alt through as well, it might take a while. <laughs> but um, so anyway, so, you know, I was working on Old Doom and everything. Meanwhile, all my friends who are in Discord with me who are in raid and, or raid because, you know, we're not actually actively raiding, right. doing stuff together. You know, they're all doing horrific visions together. They're all in uh, the Veil of Eternal Blossoms, like grouped together doing stuff. And I'm just like, time to play catch up because I'm nowhere close to that yet. So I'm going through doing the questing and stuff. And, you know, I, I appreciate it. And like the 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 solo scenario that you do is pretty cool. Like I figured out the, the puzzle pretty fast, which I guess people are saying that if you just wait long enough, it just solves itself, I guess. Wait, what's the puzzle? The one where you have to get like the uh, the the energy going from one and like transfer it all the way across the room to the other oh, terminal. Yeah, I just clicked it till I got it, but it did take me a little while. Yeah, I just like I, it seemed really easy to me, so I just kind of did it, and like I, it worked. But um, so like that that whole scenario I thought was really cool and stuff, and going through you know doing stuff with that and everything. And then it's like, okay, cool. Going back to the, the, the heart chamber. It's like, okay, now go somewhere else. It's like, okay, I can go do that. And I got to the point where I, I just started in veil of eternal blossoms. And it's like already almost midnight. I'm like, okay, I can't do this anymore tonight. So then log back in last night and I uh, was only able to play for about an hour and a half, maybe or so. So I was able to finish the assault on that and then finally finish that. So then I'm like, cool, done with this. And then it was, you know, 1230 time for bed again. Right. So I haven't gotten my cloak at all. I have like one key to do a horrific vision, but I haven't done the first one that you're supposed to fail yet. Right. And I'm just kind of sitting here. I'm like, I, I feel like if I don't finish it by Monday night, then that's a week of progress. That's just down the drain and I will never catch up. And I'm a little bummed about that. Right. So, um, I think now might be a good time, seeing as we're talking about it, and rather than bring it up again, uh, mm -hmm. to get into one of the areas that I would say is probably one of my concerns for this patch. And I, I do have some very positive things to say about this patch, but um, I think you bring up a really good point, and it's a thing that is not an easy answer, and I'm not going to present this claiming to have what is a solution, 
But so far, one of my big problems with this patch is format-wise, it's structured like an expansion. There's a lot of questing and introduction to new mechanics and introductions to new things and going places and getting the story and unlocking this and unlocking that and do this and a lot of world jumping and travel and lore before you get into what is the daily quests and what's going to be mm -hmm. the daily grind. And that structure is fine for an expansion. Yeah. Because an expansion is designed to have people going at a slower pace. You're not designed... I mean, some people still do, but you're not. it's not designed to have people just sprint to the end and start a daily grind and, and have all that. The problem with doing it for a patch is Blizzard remains hell-bent on gating and we talk about gating every patch it feels like yeah. because it it continues to be in my opinion a problem um and if you're going to put a time gate on something you are preventing people from burning out on it too fast but you are also creating a and it can be argued whether it's false or genuine sense of urgency to be caught up and to be cutting edge and to be pushing against that gate constantly. Because if that gate moves and you haven't even gotten to it in the first place, suddenly you're going to feel very behind. Um, now, one thing that I do want to say is that um, Kyvax did put out a post, or I, I think it was him, that the the main questing in, like, you know, in the upgrading of the cloak that's not going to be gated. So like if it moves for, well, it's going to be gated to the point where, you know, each week it'll move forward or whatever. That quest will always be available to you. Like the next quest, you're not going to have to wait an extra week for that. So in that sense, that totally works. But from my understanding of, of getting these like keys to do the horrific visions and stuff, you only get, what is it? Two per week and maybe three or four. If you grind out a crap ton of stuff. Right. It's it's not balanced to be a thing that you run every day or even. Yeah. Um, so if I get a horrific vision, but I fail it. Then I've lost that chance for the week to upgrade my cloak, and that's where I fall behind. And that's the thing that I'm worried about. Yeah. And, and here's the thing is that and this is why I say it's a complicated issue, because what I just said, I, I stand by. I think gating is a problem. I think. I understand why they do it. Um, I think there are good and bad sides to gating on both mm -hmm. sides. It's very easy for someone to say, well, if that gating isn't there, people are going to feel compelled like they have to do everything and they're going to feel Which constantly rushed and they're going to be forced through. And that's true. And that's also mm -hmm. bad. But my opinion, and, and this is where I feel very strongly on it, is that it should err on the side of the player making the decision to do right or wrong by themselves rather than Blizzard making the decision mm -hmm. on whether the player should or should not progress. If someone wants to burn themselves out in a week, that should be their right and their decision to make. If somebody wants to, if somebody has a vacation and this is the time they get with the game, they should be able to progress as much as they want and as far as they want, and even if that's killing the content, more power to them. That should be their their right as a player to make that call and make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, and it shouldn't be on Blizzard to say, well, we don't want you to progress further than this too fast because we don't want our content to become old. Like, yes, this is a situation where people might potentially unsub and you might lose money. But if the content and the replayability of that content and what you're putting into the game is good enough, then you don't need gates to keep people playing. People will keep playing because they'll want to do it on alts and they'll want to keep mm -hmm. coming back and they'll want to form those social bonds and hang out with their friends and people they care about. And gating is no longer necessary at that point because people just want to be in your world. And one of the big detractors, which is people falling off, ultimately doesn't matter if you don't believe in your content and you don't think it's good enough then yeah absolutely put up gates because yeah people will get done with it and go i'm done i don't need to play anymore and turn off the game but if you're doing a good job and you're making a quality game then you don't have anything to worry about in that regard so mm -hmm. 
that's kind of my hardline stance on gating. Now, where I do think it gets tricky and I can understand why Blizzard did it is this. They put out a post today clarifying the way loot is going to work from this, which is essentially a weekly reset as far as the highest progress point you've made within a week. So what that means is if you go into a horrific vision and you kill the boss only, you get a 420 item piece of gear. Now, if you go in later in that same week and you complete a boss and a bonus objective, you will then get your 430 piece of gear because that is a new highest level for the week. Mm -hmm. Or if your first time in, you get the 430, and then the second time in, you do the exact same thing, you're going to get the 420 because you haven't met that requirement. It gave you the highest one. Gotcha. So hopefully okay. that makes a little bit of sense. At least that's how I understood the clarification. And that is where I understand where this gating is coming from, because they are talking about gear and gear that is like pretty decent eye level quality mm -hmm. gear, potentially, oh, especially once you start ranking it up. And if somebody comes in and just does nothing but run heroic vision after heroic vision after heroic vision, then yeah, they are going to suddenly become uber geared compared to everybody else. And that's where I start to go, okay, I can see where that might be problematic. But it, yeah. make, it makes me wish that maybe they would adopt a stance more where you, uh, same way they do mythics, where maybe the loot you're getting in the immediate is the currency or the items to upgrade your cloak. Or little things like that, or little trinkets, mounts, pets, whatever they want to put in there. And maybe you're unlocking a chest that unlocks every week that gives you whatever gear would be qualifying for, you know, whatever you qualified for, for what you ran. Yeah. To I me, I, I mean, it's not a perfect system. I have, I have issues with that, but I just feel like we got to get away from this gating because I totally understand where you're coming from with the feeling of like, God, I'm already behind. I felt that same way because I couldn't get through all the intro quests in a single evening. And mm -hmm. then I had to record a show the following night. So I didn't get to play at all. And then next thing I know, I'm up incredibly late last night, just going, I got to get caught up. I'm so far behind. Everything's, everything's bad. And it's not a good feeling. I, it, it's not, that's not fun. No. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. This is my understanding on videos that I watched and stuff that I read, but you, you can only get a thing to upgrade your cloak in a horrific vision. If you kill the boss. Correct. Like that, that's it. So again, if you, if it limits the amount of times you can get in there, I'm going to be, let's say two levels behind everybody in my raid group. What does that mean? Does that mean that I'm just not as effective? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not sure cuz I don't I don't 100% know how how that is ultimately going to work and play out and pan out yet. Yeah. I mean, it the whole concept behind it is, you know, the cloak helps against the corrupted gear and stuff like that, which I got a corrupted piece, which I'm like, cool, it's a corrupted piece. And apparently the corruption on it is something that everybody in the raid should have because it makes everybody else better or something. Except here we go with my whole itemization thing that I always have an issue with, John. It's a downgrade from what I have. Yeah. Or I should say it's a lower item level than what I have in that slot. So then it's like, okay, we're doing this again. What the hell? Yeah, I've kind of run into that with the new... Um, I don't ever remember what it's called, but the new things you can slot from the artifact power. Mm -hmm. the um, essences yeah so the new essences help fight corruption and help you be stronger when you run those but because i only have like green level they're not as great as these other ones that i've been powering up um mm -hmm. that are at tier three or tier four so i'm kind of sitting there going well 
what do I do? Should I just use the new ones because those are more useful in horrific visions? Do I just need to change out to these if I'm going to go into a horrific vision? And am I going to do better because all of a sudden now I've got all these different essences instead of what I have been using because I decided I went wanted to go in and do it this way? And all of a sudden, and it's not a fun choice. Like, again, I... I I, it's been kind of my stressor through this entire expansion and there's been plenty that I've liked. I feel like so many decisions in this expansion were made because it made sense on paper, but not because it was mm -hmm. fun. Um, and I could say that about the initial questing in this too. They send you all over the world, which sounds fun on paper, but was a lot of me just clicking portals and getting annoyed. Like why couldn't Magni take you with him? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to Pandari now, bye. It's like, oh, okay. Well, yay for me, I have Tranquility. I can just pop over to uh, the island and then take a portal from there right into, you know, Kunlai Summit, so it's at least faster for me, but as opposed to, like, going to Jade Forest and flying all the way over to the Vale. Yeah, but, it, it's a lot yeah. of world hopping that just... Mm -hmm. It's just like, why is this here? Like, it just, it feels here to pad the numbers. And it, and uh, and by numbers, I mean, like, the how long it's going to take to mm -hmm. get through this thing. And again, at this stage, that's a frustration for people. If people could unlock the content right out of the gate, that is the stuff that's gatekeeping. If they could be doing their horrific visions from day one, then all those people wouldn't care if there's a mountain of story quests to do afterwards, because they could either do them or not. Um, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't be losing out on that progress. But by putting that at the back end of it, you've got a bunch of people going, I'm sick of freaking all this world hopping. And it didn't help that yesterday the portal system broke completely. And so... Oh, it did? Yeah, there was a chunk where I just got trapped in the chamber of the heart. And I was just <laughs> like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna... I guess I'm gonna just sit here and just be <laughs> in the chamber of heart for a while. And ultimately I logged out because it was not fixing... And then I came mm -hmm. back in and I was able to get outside of the Chamber of Heart, but then it was broken and I couldn't get back um, to Dazalalor. Dazalalor. Well, John, there's an easy way to do that. All you need to do is fly all the way up to, let's see, what continent are you on? Okay, so fly all the way up to Orgrimmar. And then from there, you can jump into that portal network. <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, there's always a way. It just takes time. Right. And it, it's it was just a, a lot. And it wasn't um, to kind of address what I'm already seeing in chat room. It wasn't like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to be even Pandaria. It wasn't that. It was that the quest thing was go to this portal so you can go to this portal so that you can go to Pandaria. I didn't mind it once I was there. I was like, that's great. Mm -hmm. But it was just like. I spent so much time just looking at loading screens while I was like, yep, going to do this because instead of one portal to keep the story moving, I had to click on three. And, uh, you know, I don't I don't need to go directly to my objective, but it would be nice to not have to feel like I'm playing the portal game of, OK, let me get out my little ley line maps. OK, so this portal <laughs> will take me to Orgrimmar. And there was a point for that. Like, there was a point where I was like, they said, go, you know, you need to talk to someone in Tears Fall Glades. And it's like, OK, I guess I got to go do that. Now, let me remind myself how I go there. OK, so I'm going to need to go to Dazalalor and <laughs> I'm going to go there and that will get me to Orgrimmar. And then from Orgrimmar, mm -hmm. I can go up and I can take the Zeppelin over and then I can fly down to there. Uh, but to get to Dazalalor, I had to Hearthstone. So I did that, took the portal, took the other portal, flew over there, <laughs> watched a cutscene that just made me angry, then flew back, then went, oh, how do I get back? Because well, I used my hearth, so I don't have a way to get there. Well, my hearthstone's gone. Look for a dragon. Tell her to send me back in time so I can go up to a, a mage tower so I can use a portal so I can get back to Orgrimmar <laughs> so I can travel to the portal room so I can go back to Dazalalor and find out which port... Oh, so then I can then go to Silithus so that I can then go to the Chamber of the Heart so I can be told which next set of portals I need to go through. It's All a right. lot of portals, man. 
See, that's one of the reasons why being a monk is great because you can always get to the get to the the float the wandering isle, which has a portal to Dalaran, which has a portal to Orgrimmar. Right. There's no cooldown on that one. Or use your Dalaran hearth to to just go to to Legion Dalaran, then take that portal to Orgrimmar. And yeah. it, it's been but, so many portals that I've gotten tunnel visioned on it. And the <laughs> other day, I was like. Oh, criminy. What am I going to do now? I got to go. I got to freaking go here. And then I remembered that Silithus is just like a mountain separated from uh, Oldham. And I was like, oh, right. I can just fly there. And it was like mm-hmm. this wonderful feeling of like, oh, I can just fly where I need to go. I don't have to take a <laughs> portal. I'll just enjoy the travel and it'll be great. So. So uh, going back a little bit, though, uh, all about choices and everything. Hey, John. Imagine if Blizzard didn't give you a choice on what to do with those essences. Because then you'll be in the situation I was in. So I go through the quest line where you get your first essence, right? Mm -hmm. It's for a DPS spec. Yeah. So I go and learn it. Great. I'm a healer. Is this Blizzard's way of saying, hey, you're not supposed to be a healer for this content. Uh, I'm a little worried about that because I don't play DPS for a reason. Yeah. So. So wait, do you only have one essence? No, you have no, to I, have a ton. I've got, of I, I have oh, a okay. bunch of essences okay. before. They're all oh. healing essences, but the one that Blizzard gave me in this specific content was, a, it was a DPS essence. I checked my loot specialization and everything. It was set up for healing, but they gave me a DPS essence. So, I was given nothing yeah. because I'm not going to use it. So therefore no choice. Um, so I'm a little worried, <laughs> like seriously, a little worried here. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't understand that. All I know is to kill things faster. That's how you tank and heal is by uh, hitting mm-hmm. things as hard as possible. Yeah. So uh, when, when I actually do get into my horrific vision and I am able to get the, the, the three things to keep your sanity going or whatever like that. Like, I'm scared that I'm just not going to do enough DPS to get my cloak thingy. So, again, I'm going to be behind unless I play the exact way that I'm supposed to, which is how I haven't played this entire expansion because I'm a healer. So I don't really know how to do a good DPS rotation because I haven't the muscle memory for it. Well, I will say, like, and we talked about this with Manny last week, you know, going in Mm -hmm. horrific visions was definitely the thing I was most excited for. And I think it's the thing that a lot of people were excited for because it's this small scale. You can solo it if you want to, or you can bring friends and you don't have to supposedly, you don't have to adhere to, you know, any sort of tank DPS healer Mm -hmm. combination. Like, That was what was really intriguing to me. And I guess part of what has taken some of the wind out of my sails, um, and I'm going to steal the line from him because I think it was actually really good. And this was a a conversation Ro and I had on Twitter, which was, uh, and I'm paraphrasing between both what I said and he said, which is Mm -hmm. when I was watching this content getting ready to come out, I thought heroic vi- or heroic horrific visions were going to be the meat of this meal that was this patch. I thought it was going to be like the main course. Yeah. And with the frequency with which you can run it and everything you have to do to get to it, it has kind of actually been the dessert. And it's mm-hmm. fine for a patch to have a dessert. Dessert is great, but when it's what you're excited for for your meal, I'm having a really hard time not being disappointed that it's not something that I can kind of go to at my own pace, which is mm-hmm. what we were able to do with the Mage Tower. Now, the Mage Tower did have a currency we had to use to unlock, but we already had a gajillion of what we needed for it because yeah. it came so late in the expansion and it wasn't a new currency. It was a currency we'd been accruing all this time. and uh, Or the Chromie thing which there were some time restrictions on doing the chromey thing. But generally speaking, if you wanted to get in there and you wanted to try it, you could and you could have fun. And with it was it. a lot of fun. I um, really enjoyed the chromey thing. And I thought this was going to be the inevitable evolution of that. Suddenly taking that content from weird little side content to making it mainstream content that I could just 
run and rerun and keep playing and keep enjoying. Mm -hmm. And what's in there is definitely not that. I did have fun with it. It does seem cool. It seems like there's a lot of neat things to it. And I do look forward to seeing how that evolves and changes. You know, again, we're not even a week into the patch, so my opinion on it could dramatically change. Yeah. But right now, it's like, oh, I only get to run it a couple times a week, and I have to do all this work to even be able to do that, and the rewards are only going to be really beneficial and interesting once a week. I, I don't know if I'm interested in it anymore. Like, you found a way to kill the fun for me. Again, bringing it back to that, you found a way yeah, to true. take the thing and, and, and kind of toss it out. So um, mm -hmm. that's a little discouraging for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, you've said it yourself. It is the first, you know, it hasn't even been out for a week. And I'm hoping that as, you know, our cloaks get upgraded and everything like that, assuming I'm able to ever do it, um, that's being able to, you know, stay in there longer and do a whole bunch more stuff and everything is really going to be where it opens up and, and, and stuff. Because it seems like a really cool, interesting thing that I, I hope I'm going to be able to get to at some point. And uh, it, I don't know. It's like, so it, it almost seems like this is kind of a precursor to what that tower is going to be in Shadowlands. Yeah. So based on that... I hope that Blizzard is, is actively really paying attention to see what people are like or, you know, like about it, what they don't and, and how to tune it right so that it is something that is, you know, accessible for any spec or um, for any number of people that want to go in there and everything. And I, I find it a little weird, but again, I haven't gotten to the point where I'm actually doing this myself, but how you, you do put points into, you know, stuff to help you in these horrific visions later on. Which, by the way, you have been calling them heroic ones the entire time. Have I? Great. Yes. <laughs> it's totally not going to be the, the the episode name either. But You should um, name it the episode. Oh, you. Oh, I totally was. You yeah, see? It. Yeah. Anyways, um, I do find it weird that, like, one side of it is entirely if you're doing it solo. The other side of it is if you are doing it entirely grouped. It's like, I, I again, once I actually see the little talent tree for it and stuff, I would really wish that no matter what you choose, it would be beneficial no matter how you go in there. Right. But I don't know. We'll see what happens with that though. I mean, I mean, that's the, that's to me, the trick is, is like, you need to, you need to respect the player's time and you need to respect it mm -hmm. in the way that, you know, you're giving them. And I think that there would be people that would argue they are respecting your time by limiting it to one, item per week yeah they're not making you run it constantly and it is a case where i see both sides of that argument but i just think about how my play style is and it's like i don't know how much i'm going to get to log in in a given week and mm -hmm. when i do log in um it's probably going to be bigger chunks of time on the weekend and am i going to have time to grind out the currency that i need to be able to go do the content i want in that time on the weekend that i have Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I know that there was no way for me to really gauge how that horrific vision was going to go when I first got into it because they do kind of give you, and I, I don't even know what you would call it. Like that, That's the problem is because I want to go into the this content fresh. I didn't play it on the PTR or anything like that. But during the quest, there's a part where you go into a horrific vision in Oldham, and there's a part where you go into a horrific vision in Pandaria, and um, that which is different than the Orgrimmar version of these things. Mm -hmm. And when I went into the one in Oldham, uh, you're almost immediately kicked out of it, and that's when they start to come up with ways to try to keep you in it. And then you're in there for a little bit longer, and you do a little bit more stuff, and then you get you know, you do what you got to do and you get out of there, but you're able to be in there for a long time. And then when I went back into it in Pandaria, there was definitely a time limit and I could run around and kind of do whatever I wanted, but I couldn't tell if it was a case of, am I supposed, like, I didn't know what to do. It was yeah. like, it gave me a quest objective and I completed it almost right away. It was closed six portals, but then I'm still there. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? So I start running around start killing things i found a rare mob so i fought it 
And I was like, okay, well, kill this guy. And by the time I finished it, I like my corruption was almost maxed out. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Am I going to get credit for these quest rewards if I get forcibly booted? Or am I going to lose? And then who knows how I'm going to get back in here. I better go run. And so I ran back out and made it just in time to escape on my own. I still don't know if I'm supposed to just be in there till it ends or what, because the game didn't do a very good job of telling me. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally got to the actual, like the real, the real one in Orgrimmar, um, I'm going off of how long I had in these other places, which was substantially longer than what I have when I go into Orgrimmar. Mm -hmm. And so I go in, I go walking down, and there's mobs, and I start fighting mobs in that intro area, and I'm like, okay, Thrall is basically where the war chief would be. He's who I have to kill. He is the boss. I'm not. I'm definitely. This is my first time in. I'm not gonna try and do too much beyond that. But we'll fight a couple mm-hmm. of these mobs. So I fight a couple mobs. I get to the two guards by the gate. I fight them. I beat them, and I look, and I'm at like seventy five percent corrupted, and I go oh crap and i go racing in to fight thrall and i couldn't kill him in time and i got booted out didn't didn't complete it and i happened to have two of the item to get me in to the horrific visions Mm -hmm. um and so i went back in and went straight to thrall and was able to do it in time and then i unlocked an upgrade for my cloak and all the you know all the stuff that comes with it and was like okay that's better, but it sucks that I had to waste that item because I didn't know what to expect because everything that showed me what to expect was substantially longer and different than what this was when I actually jumped in. Thank you. Like, so much so. Thank you, because that is a warning that I definitely need. Uh, considering it's going gonna, it's gonna to take me loads of time longer to kill anything, I really need to just gung-ho right there for it because otherwise i'm just sol yeah you have to fight the two guards on the side um because there's a barrier up but once you kill them you can go straight in and fight thrall and that's what i would recommend doing it's what everyone should probably do on their first run i'm sure there's people that are like well i killed half the city on my first run okay great well good for you but <laughs> <you're> <laughs> for, <a> greater person <laughs> for most people i would say maybe go straight to thrall yeah there's always that one person who's like in greens just like i can do everything yeah yeah good for them yeah that's awesome that's an uh, incredible achievement that i couldn't pull off if i worked way harder at it so yeah so uh, let's shift gears a little bit more uh to you know just cool things that we've seen so far things that we're definitely enjoying because uh, i mean all that being said all the worry that i have the you know just the unknown is kind of just what i'm i'm you know really considering until i i'm able to get in there and try all this stuff um that being said it's great being in pandaria again i absolutely love the the reveal of that that clan i thought that was great um and then seeing the veil of eternal blossoms which i love that zone and then garage destroyed that zone and then it's like it's back oh it <laughs> It's crappy. It is. But at the same time, it looks so nightmarish and cool. And like the, it really evoked the the kind of emotion that I think like the the you know whatever art direction was really trying to go with. It's it's nightmarish. I mean, there's eyes on the sides of mountains just peeping around looking at stuff. There's tentacles everywhere. It's got this purplish like hue. I mean, it's horrifying. Considering you know that this was like the holiest of places in Pandaria and it's just corrupted all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think the the look of it is really cool. Actually, I love a lot about this patch. And I I think I would want to clarify to anybody that's like, man, John's just ragging on this patch real bad. The reason I feel so passionately about ragging on it is because it comes so close to something that like I'm super into like that's where my issue comes from is it's what it's like is it's like standing outside the gates of Disneyland and going oh can we go in there and someone going no but we'll blindfold you once a week and take you to one ride and you can go on it (laughs) and then you can stand outside the gate of Disneyland until we let you do it again in another week and it's like 
I don't think this is the best way to enjoy this theme park. I think there's probably a better way we could do this. Like, you could let me come in and do what I want in the theme park. And and that's kind of how this expansion feels for me because I see so much potential. Like, I see a game where I have honestly, if, like being completely honest with listeners here, where I've struggled to find the fun a lot this expansion, and I see them standing fun adjacent at the moment i'm going oh there it is there's the fun i was looking for and they're going "Mm, no and i'm like but no it's right there we should go to it and have fun and they're like well we're thinking about it so (laughs) i i just really i i want to see them get to it and and succeed at it because i think there's really cool things here and i kind of think it's that future of wow i mean there's those big moments where you know, Blizzard stumbles on something like dailies mm-hmm. didn't exist until Burning Crusade. And then they put dailies in the game. And now we think of them as like this chore and it's awful. But like there was a time where it was like, this game's incredible. Daily quests. I come in and there's something to do every day. Are you kidding me? This is the greatest day of my life. You know what the game needs? More bombing runs. Bombing runs. Put them in the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, I, but I miss those. <laughs> sure. Yeah, bombing runs are great. Let's throw yeah, some now, stuff at some eyes. Now they give you full control. No, no one wants that. No, I want to be, on, wanna rails. be on rail. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, it's it's just one of those things where it's like every now and then they hit some like dramatic shift that really changes the game or turns it on its head, and you go, oh wow, they really, um, mm-hmm. you know, they discovered something great here, and I feel like they're so close to that with this type of content. Um, I feel like they're so close and I think that's why if you're like, John, you're ragging on them so hard. It's because I see how close they are to something, at least for me, um, that will really speak to me and be something that I'd be into and wanting to engage with. It's just not a hundred percent there yet because again, it feels like every time I start to get momentum towards it, they're pushing me back and go, "Mm -mm, no, not yet. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I will say I love the liberal use of golden dragons everywhere now that we're getting more and more zones that you can, you know, phase back into a previous version and everything. I'm stoked that they're starting to use that con- that like technology just all over the place now. You know, it it's something that we've talked about many episodes previously about, you know, why don't they change the world more? They have this ability to do it. They are. Yeah. I'm so happy about that. So being able to go to Oldham and which is funny because that is the phasiest zone there is <laughs> and being able to have yet another phase on top of it is pretty cool. But um, like I never really thought I would enjoy Oldham again, which still have some issues with it just because, like I said, when I was trying to do the, the assault, everything's just so spread out that I didn't know what I was doing except for okay well kill this thing click on that kill this thing click on that and just continue doing that for an hour or two my biggest issue was the Pandaria one where they sent me into uh you know where you fight the golden sun pandas that are mind controlled in the raid Mm -hmm. oh yeah they send you in that side door there and then you basically have to run through the dungeon through the raid zone to where you mm-hmm. uh to where you first come in to fight one boss so you can turn right back around and go all the way back and it's just like what are you guys doing well maybe it's because i did it yesterday i had uh, dailies that i was you know working on as i was going through that whole zone so, so it worked I for me timed it because i didn't know I mm-hmm. timed it so that all my dailies were turned in and it was the last thing I did. Oh. So I just was like, well, here's five minutes of me running down a <laughs> corridor. Oh, I'm done. Can I go out the other way that I know there's an entrance? I tried that. And no. <laughs> no, it's a big dark cave. I guess I'll do five minutes of running back the way I came. Uh, also, uh, shout out. I don't remember your screen name, but there was someone who said they're a listener who I ran into and we got lost together right over there. Hello. It was a pleasure being lost in that entrance with you. Uh, when you ran down the big dark hallway and I didn't see you come back for a while, I was absolutely convinced that was the way to go. And I 
I was so sad to see you come riding right back past me. <laughs> it's funny because uh, me and two other people, uh, I think they were both guildies, were all running up towards that door, and I'm like, and I just, uh, you know, typed and say, can we get out this way? And someone's like, I don't know. So I'm like, I'm going. And then I run all the way down and can't go any further. So, I'm, uh, so I turn around and run back. Auto run, I'm like, guess not. Either someone was auto running and not paying attention and went past me right back, right down that cave and then turned around and came back. Then the original monk who was going to run up there with me <laughs> sees me running past him, salutes, and turns around and runs back. <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. But, uh, one thing that I did do, though, is um, as I was trying to do the, the whole assault and stuff, I went into the the the, the mine where, you know, you, you go in and where you fight uh, the the Shaw Pride and everything like that. Yeah. So I'm trying to kill uh, Manted, which, holy crap, Manted attacking. That's like, I love the continued story of them and their futility of let's take over Pandaria <laughs> and how there's cycles and stuff. I love that about them and the fact that they're doing it again. And I'm just like, this is, they're so dumb and I hate them so much, but this is great. <laughs> um, love that. But uh, so I go in there and stuff and you know, there's Manton all over the place and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, stuff's going on. And then I get to where the Shaw pride is. And there's this giant tentacly eyeball thing and stuff. I'm like, Oh, there's something going on here. And I look at my mini map and there's like, you know, the, 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 the swords crossed so it's like, there's something going on. And so I see someone like turning statues and they're like surrounding this big clump of stuff with beams of things. And I'm like, oh, cool. So I go and try to hit the console and it doesn't work for me because I guess someone else got credit for it. So I'm like, oh, OK. Hey, it's starting over again. So then I did all the <laughs> turned all the statues and got the beams going and stuff and did the turn in for it. And I got credit for it. And it was cool. I'm like, this is nice. I really enjoyed this. I'm like, I killed a giant clump of yeah yeah so yeah like um i do like the fact that we're finally at the the point in a story where we're actively fighting an old god not just a piece that like kind of broke through but we're trying to like save the entire world we're trying to kill this thing and it's like we're ants versus this gigantic colossal horrific thing and I like how they've imparted that in this patch and I think it's pretty cool and I'm kind of stoked about it. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's very compelling. Um, I, I do wish they hadn't said there's not going to be another patch. I'm a little yeah. concerned about that. I think there's a lot of things you could do. I don't know the tech end of it, obviously, but I think fairly easily to get some longevity out of B, um, BFA uh and yeah. just little things like the ability to queue up for island expedition solo would be huge i would mm -hmm. do that like crazy that's obviously not something you want to do right now because people are still grinding out azurite and you don't want to give someone a solo easy way to do it like mad but that would be perfect for an 8.3.5. Hey, you can queue up for island expeditions by yourself now. Mm -hmm. Here's you now have access to mounts and pets like crazy. Go knock yourself out. Um, yeah. You know, it would be a great time to make the game a little more alt friendly. I mean, I guess that's one of my Just other big little. concerns <laughs> is so often in the final patch, that's where you get your... And now alts are going to be a real cool thing. We want to encourage you to get in with your alts, do mm -hmm. stuff with your alts. And um, I don't know if I've seen the alt friendly nature of it. I've got a couple items that are actually, I think they're soul bound. So I don't think I can even send them to an alt. So I take it. No, the, the, if it's like the benthic gear that drops, it's like, here's a male piece of shoulders and stuff. You, you should be able to, to okay. send that anywhere in your account. I'll have to try it. Uh, my biggest problem is because this expansion has already been so alt unfriendly. Mm -hmm. None of my characters are at max level. I have one max level character, which is unheard of for an expansion. I almost I've got always a have mage. I just made. I almost <laughs> always have two. I guess I technically have two because I did boost one, um, but they're an alliance tune for other reasons. So, uh, but yeah, I'd I'd like to see I'd like to see island expeditions become soloable. I'd like to see more alt friendly stuff. I definitely think that they could make a couple rewards and scaling and stuff like that a little bit easier right at the end for just mm -hmm. a sort of 
get everybody in here, experience things. Probably that would be a good time to lighten up the amount and frequency with which you could go through these horrific visions um, and let people do that quicker and easier. So I actually really think this expansion could benefit from an 8.3.5, but I'm saying that, you know, a couple days after the patch came out, I guess yeah. let's see where we end up going forward. Yeah, I... I mean, a 0.5 I can totally see, but definitely another content patch at this point with Shadowlands on the way. No way that's going to happen. No, no. And I don't think we need anything big or major. And who knows? Maybe Shadowlands is way closer than I think. But not to be negative, but I think there's a lot of people that are sitting there going, <laughs> yeah, we got 12 months of this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like I the the idea that Shadowlands is coming out like before the new year is like really iffy if you ask me just based on previous uh you know expansion releases if it comes out before then great if it comes out before blizzcon like a lot of people are thinking they're crazy right but i mean it'd be fine hopefully i'm wrong but there's not even a beta yet there's very limited not even information alpha yeah there's not even alpha as far as we know i think there could be a very private private alpha going on but yeah like, like it, i don't even think friends and family started from anything that i've heard could be wrong. But. I remember, I don't remember which expansion, but I remember there was another situation where we were, it might have even been Legion, where it was like, oh yeah, it's going to be a shorter wait and all of that, and it still was like 12 months So, yeah. uh, from where we thought it was going to be. So I'm thinking we're going to have this patch for a while, so I also, as a result, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, we could use an 8.3.5. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I don't want to go through the entire war campaign again on on an alt. I really don't want to. I've done it twice. Once to go side with Sylvanas, once to side with Thrall. Or Sarfang, sorry. Yeah. Um, and technically three times, although I never completely finished it with the Alliance side, so. Yeah. But uh, regardless, anyways... Um, those are just kind of our, our early thoughts on it. I'm sure we're going to talk about it, you know, much more in depth as we play more and, you know, are able to uh, get through some of the stuff. We'll have um, a guest in to tell us how wrong we are. Uh, oh, yeah. Probably. We'll invite so. Manny back. <laughs> he can <laughs> come in and wrong. tell us why we figured everything out the wrong way and why we are doing it all wrong. Mm -hmm. Because um, Manny is good. He's great and at we are <laughs> I, I was gonna, I was going to say great at that. But I didn't mean it that way, but no, he has such a different perspective that it's always refreshing having him on, and I, I love that. Um, but speaking of different ideas and perspectives, uh, I did actually kind of try to get Ro on this week. He wasn't able to join us, but he was very tuned in to what this patch was going to be, so I thought he'd be a good person to talk to. Um, that being said, he did send about a three-minute clip about his kind of mm. thoughts and ideas. I haven't heard it yet, but I'm going to go ahead and put it on at the end of the episode. So uh, everybody make sure to kind of look forward to that and, you know, see what he has to say. Um, other than that, though, John, thank you very much for talking about 8.3 with me this week. Hey, uh, it was fun. I played a lot of WoW this week, as it turns out. So that was great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing more tonight and uh, this weekend. Yeah. Maybe I'll have a cloak by Monday. <laughs> We'll see and, how that goes. Yeah, you're probably pretty close to it, honestly. It's not it's not far, and you get a crappy version of it, and then getting the upgrade if you go straight to Thrall is not that hard either. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Um, so before we say goodnight, I just want to say, uh, I'd throw it out there really quick. Everybody tomorrow, wish Nevermore a happy birthday. And uh, John, if people are looking for you, where can they find you? Hey, if you want to find more from me, you can follow me on on twitter i'm at john underscore jagger and if you want to catch me on other shows you can catch me on core, core. talking about video games video games video games yeah uh and whatever else might come up uh, a lot of people seem to not realize even though i say it every week so i'm pretty sure our listeners know but apparently a lot of people don't know that that's not just the heroes of the storm show anymore so uh, no, it's not. Video game show core where we talk core! about video games. I wasn't um, ready for that core. Yeah, it was good. Woof, that was big. Big, so. big core energy. Uh, hey, also, I play Dungeons and Dragons every week, and that's not me bragging. That's me telling you about the other show 
Uh, there will be Dungeons, which is a show I do Sunday, also with uh, people from the Frog Pants Network, Scott Johnson, Bo Schwartz, and Kyle Ferguson and Kristen Ashton. Um, we have been going through a campaign. We've been streaming it, recording it, um, and just absolutely having a blast. This next episode should be a pretty big one. I know I say that frequently, but uh, who knows? Well, who knows what You know, as a listener, a lot of the episodes are big. It's a pretty big episode coming up. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. We finished our M fighting tournament. Good uh, stuff. It was good. It was all good stuff. So anyway, check that out. There will be dungeons.com. You can find all those episodes, get caught up, or you know, just jump in and join us. You'll figure it out. It's yeah, fine. exactly. It's easy. Exactly. Uh so I almost just started reading patrons for no good reason right just now. So mm-hmm. Ben, why don't you tell us where people can follow <laughs> you? Uh, well, if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter. I am at Ben Bumhofer. Uh, I do a couple other shows as well. I do one called DN Discussions, where uh, Ryan Reeder, also known as TBK Zord, and I, we uh, talk about Dungeons and Dragons, you know, like uh, concepts, story ideas, kind of go through things from a, a DM and a player perspective. A um, lot of fun to talk about. Uh, so much so that that is not a good segue, but regardless, I play Dungeons and Dragons as well. On a show called Plus Five to Hit, uh, which really weirdly we never really you know talk about on D and discussions, considering Ryan and I are both on Plus Five to Hit. I know that is that is odd, actually. Yeah, that, we need to promote that like way more than we do. Well, you guys talk about your own personal games, but you don't talk about the game that you literally do together. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, we need to do that. But um, anyways, plus five to hit. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a bunch of people you might or might not know in that. Um, on top of that, the place where, uh, I mean, other than DN Discussions, the place where I talk about our own personal campaign the most is probably on Boxfort with Eludra. Uh, where we actually just talk about whatever we geek out about games, movies, comic books. We have a lot of fun. Going to be uh, getting back into the recording after some hiatus of me being super duper busy with work and also sickness, which was not fun. But we're going to be getting back to that next week. Um, other than that, though, this show, Azeroth Roundtable, the one you just listened to, you can find every single episode we've ever done on AzerothRoundtable.com, as well as on iTunes and Spotify and some other places. Um, on top of that, if you like to reach out to us, you can always tweet at us. That is at Azeroth RT. And if you find that 240 characters is not enough, 280 characters? Oh, eh, whatever. That's Close what, to 300 or less characters. If, if it's more than that, you can always email us. Send those to AzerothRoundtable at gmail.com. And last but not least from me, you like watching us live? I do. I'm always here when we record live, if I'm on the episode. Anyways, you can check that out on twitch.tv slash AzerothRT. And of course, you can find out when we are streaming through our Twitter. That brings us to the end of the show. Hi, everybody. John, back again to talk a little more at you. Uh, And I'm able to do this because you help support this show with money and love. But you can't pay us love through patreon which is what we're talking about right now so i guess right now we're talking about money which sounds dirty but i just want you to know we also appreciate the love anyway money patreon.com slash azeroth rt is where you can go to support us uh again the money category (laughs) it's just i can't stress enough feel ashamed that's the focus of this particular ad you can support us other ways, but right now we're just laser focused on one. So a thank you to everybody who has opted to go this route and gone to patreon.com slash Azeroth RT to allow quality uh, advertisements like this to continue. Uh, every week we like to thank the Murloc Club for going above and beyond for helping us with money. <laughs> So a big thank you to Aaron, Blixie the Rogue, Brandon O, Caleb M, Kilroy Tastic, Sarah M, and Taryn. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> Should I start doing that? I always know it's a good ad when Ben doesn't have the energy to do a Murloc voice. 
He's just like, nope. I yeah, have lost seriously. all interest in uh, condoning what you're doing here. Today. I should start. I should start doing that again. Uh, doing what they, again? They weren't good. The, oh, that's true. I've never done the Patreon ad before, except for when you aren't here. Which oh was wait, you want to take over the ads again? Why? No. I do them so well. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Azeroth RT is the place to go. A big thank you to all of you. You are all wonderful, beautiful people. Um, and we can say that because we can see your hearts. And money. <laughs> you said it that time, not me. Well, I was just continuing what you started. Uh huh. You know, much like Kylo Ren and Darth Vader. Yeah. Anyways, everybody, thank you very much for listening to this episode. Chat room, you guys are awesome as always. John, thanks. And uh, everybody, until next time, be good to each other. And now let's turn it over to Ro. And that's where the podcast is technically ending until where we put the Ro thing. <laughs>